my name is Tessa Broyles, and I am the scenic behind Behind the Scenics. And today I am breaking the tradition of never showing my face in order to share freelancing tips. I gathered together a group of scenic artists who were willing to record their answers to specific questions that I asked them. Because this is my first time making this style of video, I asked a lot of broad, general questions that would mostly be of interest to people who are considering freelancing or who are new to freelancing, but there are also several things that were covered that would be of interest to anyone at any point in their career. I do intend to keep making this style of video, and so if there is any topic that you would be interested in, let me know. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. I have been freelancing in New York City for less than a year, so all of these questions were based off of things that I myself was asking not that long ago. And so I have organized all of these questions into five parts. Part one gives an introduction to each of the scenic artists and covers what is freelancing even like? What types of things can I do? Part two covers how do I find work? How do I network? How often should I be reaching out to shops? Things like that. Part three is huge. It just covers tips. I asked them what their biggest tips were, what they wish they knew starting out, general nuggets of wisdom, it's all in there. Part four is about how to keep yourself organized as a freelancer, as well as a little bit about finances. And part five covers, do I need a side gig? How worried should I be about gaps between work? And so without further ado, here are the brave, brave souls who agreed to answer my questions. Hi, my name is Kara and I am the charge artist at Kansas City Rep. And while I no longer freelance full time, I definitely owe so much to that world and I miss it dearly. My name is Lily Payne and I am a freelance scenic artist and muralist and I work in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I have about 17 years of experience doing this. Hi, my name is Emma Cummings. I am a freelancing scenic artist and designer based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but I have done work all over the Northeast and I've been freelancing for about three years now. My name is Alex Jacobs. I am a freelance scenic artist here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I've been practicing scenic art for the last four years, roughly. Hello, my name is Justine Schneider. I am a scenic artist in the Cleveland, Ohio area, and I have been freelancing here for the past seven years. Hi, I'm Steph Chiraska. I am a freelance scenic artist of 10 years, and I freelance mainly in Chicago. Hello, my name is Jo and I am a freelance scenic artist here in Glasgow in Scotland, but I freelance work all over the UK. I'm Kate, I'm the scenic chart artist at People's Light in Malvern, Pennsylvania, and before that I freelanced around the greater Philadelphia area for about 15 years. Occasionally I will be sharing my own thoughts and advice from the perspective of an introverted new freelancer in New York City. I will also be reading off some advice that was sent to me by Jenny Knott. She works for Roscoe and is very involved in the scenic art community, so you will probably come across her at some point. So what is freelancing like? I personally love freelancing because it means you get to do a hundred different things. Every week is different. Sometimes every week is a different team, a different job, a different task, and it's just always interesting. You get to meet a bunch of great people and it's always changing and yeah, it's a bit of an adventure. It can be really, really fun. I really, really love it. I have so many fun, ridiculous, wonderful stories of the freelance life. It's a great way to make a living. It's great to be in charge of your life this way. Freelancing is freedom for me. I get to pick what jobs I say yes to. I get to pick what jobs I get to say no to. I get to pick the people I work with. And for the most part, I can pick my hours. I really enjoy being able to float between all the different theaters in the city. As an introvert, I can say that freelancing is not always that easy. I do enjoy it because of the variety of things that I get to do, but it is stressful because I don't like talking to people, but I have to talk to people. And so you have to kind of be willing to push your boundaries and do things that are not in your comfort zone. Freelance for me has been challenging and incredibly rewarding. I don't think that it's any more difficult than any other thing that you might be passionate about. There's problems and then there's solutions. 
And if you're proactive and you dedicate your time to it, then I think that anything can become easier with time. Our line of work is all about adapting and flourishing in all these environments and complex challenges. I got to gather experience in a lot of different environments. I learned how to paint very quickly. I learned how to paint efficiently. I learned how to paint with different types of paint in different shop environments. What to do when the paint's not drying because it's cold or wet or humid or what to do when the paint is drying too fast because it's hot and you're painting outside in a parking lot because it's the only space that's big enough to lay down a drop. These are all fun, ridiculous lessons that I learned while freelancing. Freelancing was a really great way to see a lot of different kinds of organizations, learn a lot of different methods and ways to work and think about problems. You get to work on a whole lot more fun variety of things. But it doesn't come without its downsides. It is uncertain. Sometimes you have to do jobs that you really wish you didn't have to do. Freelancing can be incredibly difficult, but it's definitely very rewarding for any person who likes constant change. I like constant change in location and projects that I'm working on. And so it really suits my needs in that way where I can be doing new things all the time. It is hard and it is a little bit scary at times. Like, okay, where's my next paycheck going to come from? Especially that month after you've finished all the Christmas shows and nothing happens until February. There's always that constant state of yin and yang where you're not sure where the next opportunity will come, but you know it'll come if you keep pursuing it. Being a freelancer is like walking around with all of the freedom, but a major cloud of uncertainty follows behind you. But it's your cloud of uncertainty. I think for a lot of people that could be uncomfortable, but ultimately it's my work, it's my time. I'm choosing how to spend it and I'm choosing the jobs that I'm taking. All of the responsibility is on me, but then all of the successes of the jobs are mine as well. Freelancing is the duality of the uncertainty, but also the love and passion for what you do. There's the chance of failure in freelancing, but there's also such an opportunity for growth. That's the ultimate feeling of being a freelancer, is that thrill and excitement of just not knowing what's coming next, but the anticipation of it as well. Also, another what I would consider huge pro to the freelance world that I very much miss is getting to work with people in all of the different theaters around town. But as you get into that community and you build trust within that community and people start to look out for you and take care of you and take you in and it's a big happy family and nobody is just like out to get their own or no one's looking out just for themselves. People take care of one another and look out for one another. Honestly, freelance is not any scarier than starting any other new career. Pittsburgh specifically, it's a relatively small city. And so the theater community there is pretty small, but it's very tight knit. And you have this group of artists that are all rooting for each other and all recommending each other for different projects. And it's really nice to be surrounded by people like that who know each other and want each other to succeed. I really, really enjoy getting to know all kinds of different people throughout the city. The theater community is so small. Eventually you learn all the faces and all the names. The theater is such a, an inclusive space that people of all levels and all skill sets can find work and can find a place to be. What kind of work can I do? There's a bunch of different work you can do. It comes at a bunch of different scales. You have the very small storefront theaters where the operating budget is very teeny tiny. And if you are painting there, there's a good chance you're either designing or building it or both. There is a little bit higher than that where you can hire a scenic artist and hire a technical director and be the scene designer, that sort of thing. That's more diversity in those jobs. There's film and television a little bit. There's a lot of commercial stuff happening, a lot of theater in between. Test yourself out on a bunch of different kinds of work. I have done all sorts of things over the years. It's provided me with a lot of opportunities in industries that I wouldn't have expected. Try to be creative about it. I worked with a props house for a while. I worked with some wedding planners. There's a couple different ways to come at it. And you never know what's going to lead to the next. I started out in professional theaters and worked in scene shops and painted for many years. And then about 10 years ago, I sort of broke away from that and 
gotten into working for myself entirely. You would hire me for large scale exterior murals or smaller murals, interior as well, businesses, organizations, themed environments. I do museum exhibit work, and that's a really interesting industry. I also apply for public art calls that come out. I don't have experience in scene design, but I had experience in graphic design, and that was sort of easy to translate as I moved into designing my own murals and creating them. And that has helped me employ myself as a muralist because I'm designing the things that I'm then producing. There's also, you know, the big ones are summer stock and some of the bigger theaters have not well paid, but paid <laughs> internships. And they look for all different levels of skill. And then there's, of course, the community theater aspects of it, which are a good place to get started, build a portfolio. But again, not a lot of money. In addition to the places that were mentioned by the others, here are a couple more places that you could potentially look for some work. Opera, ballet, children's shows, camps, dance companies, festivals, parades, circuses, worship, fashion shows, concerts, themed restaurants, themed retail, signs, windows display, photography sets, model making, comedy, advertising, trade shows, pop-ups, dances, celebrations, political events, award presentations, Grand openings, parties, casinos, amusement parks, haunted houses, laser tag, aquariums, arcades, zoos, visitor centers. There are so many ways you can apply your skills and are very applicable to a lot of different places. Well, not comprehensive, I hope this video has given you a good idea of what freelancing is like and what you can do with it. When I started, I had no idea if I would even like it, but it has been a good experience. If you have any questions about what freelancing is like or you have already started freelancing and you want to share your experience, feel free to comment below.